This is the Citizen Link Report. If you find our insights helpful, would you support our video efforts? Your gift of $25 or more goes a long ways. Covers the crew, lights, cameras, all that. Just click on Donate. Thanks from all of us. The court battle over health care is once again knocking on the door of the Supreme Court. This is the Citizen Link Report. I'm Stuart Shepard along with Bruce Hausconnect who watches over the courts for Focus on the Family. Hi, Bruce. Hi, Stuart. One company sells arts and crafts. The other company makes fine cabinetry. They have one thing in common, though, in particular, and that is they both agree that life is sacred. And that's what's brought them to the door of the Supreme Court asking the court to hear their cases. Catch us up on Hobby Lobby and Conestoga Woods specialties. We almost have to go back to 2010 with the passage of the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare. As part of that law that uh, mandates uh, uh, health care coverage for everyone, they uh, defined a term or left a, a term undefined, I should say, called preventive services. They left it up to the Department of Health and Human Services to define what types of services ought to go into health care plans of a preventative nature. Yeah. So uh, what came out of the HHS is called the HHS mandate, which is simply an order uh, requiring employers uh, with more than 50 employees or any employer actually that furnishes a company health plan to provide a, a list of certain drugs and services as a part of their health plan. And on that list? And on that list is uh, contraceptive devices that are possible abortion causing drugs. And um, several companies, uh, several, a lot of companies, and, and including a lot of nonprofit uh, religious uh, entities, which are not at issue in the Supreme Court cases we're talking about now, have all filed lawsuits. There are over 70 lawsuits total around the country involving over 200 plaintiffs. Um, but we have a Hobby Lobby uh, in, out of the Tenth Circuit. They're an Oklahoma corporation that is family owned. They have 13,000 employees. They provide a generous uh, health care package, but they absolutely object to the taking of a human life that would be caused by providing these abortion-causing drugs. And Conestoga Wood Specialties is a Pennsylvania family-owned corporation that employs about 950 employees who objects to the HHS mandate for the same reason. They both filed suit. Uh, one in a uh, federal court in the Third Circuit, which is where Conestoga is located, and one in the Tenth Circuit, which okay. is where Hobby Lobby is located. They both came up with opposite results. Meaning that Hobby Lobby won at the appeals court, Conestoga did not. That's right. The Tenth Circuit said, yes, Hobby Lobby, uh, their religious rights are violated under the First Amendment and under the federal statute known as the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. The Third Circuit looked at the uh, Conestoga uh, specialties case and, and the family there and said, no, a for-profit corporation does not have uh, religious exercise uh, rights under the First Amendment, and so therefore they, they can't bring this claim. And, and that increases the chances that the Supreme Court would take these, perhaps even together, because of the split between the circuits. That's right. It, it's a technical term we call a circuit split, but all it means is that you have two federal court of appeals in two separate sections of the country coming to opposite conclusions over an important uh, uh, question of law, and in this case a federal Health Care Act that applies to all Americans. So uh, because you have a circuit split and because there are other circuits also entertaining these same issues on behalf of for-profit corporations, and they're also coming down on either side of the issue of whether for-profit corporations can act religiously. And, and, and I don't want to take you too far down the road of speculation, but this is two of a huge number of cases that are coming up through the courts. Might the Supreme Court wait a bit until more of these come up through the appeals courts? They may not because the issues are clearly defined here and there are no, what I would say, slippery procedural issues that might derail a case as we saw in the marriage cases where they never really got to the constitutional issues in, in the Prop 8 case from California. They, they decided it on a procedural issue. These cases are clean, what they call, you know, simply ready to argue the constitutional issues. And that's why they'll probably take these. Now, we often talk about the First Amendment here, and particularly the right to religious freedom, the free exercise of religion. The U.S. government is making an unusual argument in this case. It's taking the, the thought that as an individual, 
you have religious freedom, mm -hmm. but once you join together as a corporation, suddenly that First Amendment right is gone. Tell us about that. Yes, it, it is the argument they're making, but it, it doesn't make much sense when you think about the fact that around the country, um, churches are organized as corporations. Religious nonprofits uh, are organized as corporations. Groups of like believing individuals, like faith, get together in a corporate nature to implement their religious beliefs. That's what a nonprofit religious corporation is. Supreme Court has recognized their religious rights under the First Amendment. Yeah. For-profit corporation, um, organized by a small group of individuals, usually a family, who clearly implements the religious beliefs in their corporate uh, activity, uh, should uh, should have the same type of religious protection. Now we're not talking about General Motors who has who have thousands of um, varying stockholders of different beliefs and everything, but we are talking about some for-profit corporations that ought to be protected under the First Amendment. Now, with all the conversation going on right now about defunding Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act as it's generally called, I, it, some are going to ask the question, could these cases overturn the whole thing? What's the answer to that? Well, not these, not the HHS mandate. Uh, this is a specific question of religious freedom having to do with that law. It needs to be decided uh, in favor of religious freedom. Otherwise, some of these well-known companies are going to go out of business. Uh, the Green family that owns and runs Hobby Lobby has already said they will not comply with the HHS mandate. They would rather go out of business before they do that. And they would be forced out because the fines would be more than a million bucks a day. $1.3 million a day in the case of Hobby Lobby and in the case of Conestoga, um, they're, they're looking at over the course of a year uh, approximately $35 million a year. Wow, unbelievable. Bruce, thanks for that update. Appreciate your insight. Sure. And thank you for watching. We appreciate hearing from you as well. You may always write to us at mail at citizenlink.com. Pray for the leadership at Hobby Lobby and all the employees there, and for the leadership at Conestoga Wood Specialties and all the employees there. Pray for their peace of mind as they go through this difficult fight against their own government for the freedom of religion. And remember, stand tall and be heard.